as, as you know, VHL is a condition that leads to tumors in multiple organs. Uh, and these tumors can occur lifelong. Um, you can get tumors in very young children uh, and uh, in, in people who are well into their adulthood. Uh, you never stop being at risk for developing new tumors. So any management strategy uh, that we construct needs to account for this. Uh, since tumors uh, are essentially able to uh, you know, grow in different organs independent of each other, we've typically in the past taken uh, an organ-specific approach to the management of patients with VHL. Uh, these approaches have uh, you know, a variety of different intents, uh, all aimed at making the life of these patients uh, in a better. Uh, some of the tumors that arise in VHL have malignant potential, meaning they can metastasize. Examples of this are cleosal kidney cancer, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, fear chromocytomas, and panganglomas. Uh, and the primary goal in managing many of these tumors is to prevent them from becoming metastatic. Because once they're metastatic, they become, become much, much harder to manage. Uh, so how do we manage these? I'll, I'll use kidney cancer as an example. So we, uh, when, when we know that somebody with VHL has uh, kidney tumors, uh, we follow them very, very closely. Uh, over the years, we have uh, uh, you know, studied the natural history of these tumors. Uh, and at least as of, as of now, we believe that those tumors that are below three centimeters, solid tumors below three centimeters that arise in the kidney have very, very little by way of metastatic potential. Uh, uh, and so we are generally very comfortable watching these tumors until they get to a size of around three centimeters or so, at which point we typically remove these tumors. Our surgeons go in, take these tumors out, uh, because patients can have hundreds of tumors in their kidneys, and, and these tumors can recur. Um, over the years, uh, surgeons at the NCI and elsewhere have developed uh, a, a, a way to both take these tumors out and achieve the disease control uh, that uh, we seek uh, while maintaining renal function. In, in the, a long time ago, when people had these bilateral multifocal kidney tumors, people would uh, have both their tumors, both their kidneys removed and they would go on dialysis. Uh, we don't do that anymore. Uh, what we try to do is to just take these tumors out and leave as much kidney behind as possible. And the, uh, the approach we refer to as nephron span surgery. Uh, with this approach, many people are able to live you know, uh, with reasonable uh, kidney function for most of their lives. Uh, now, it's not always possible to preserve kidney function in every single person, but that's the, that's the goal. Uh, and if... Uh, we are able to diligently pursue surveillance and intervene appropriately uh, when needed. We're able to really uh, minimize the risk of uh, metastatic disease and with the approaches I've just described, retain organ function. Similar approaches are used for pancreatic tumors uh, and, and, and fear chromocytomas. Fear chromocytomas, in addition to the metastatic potential, can also cause symptoms because they secrete these uh, you know, hormones that... Uh, uh, you know, have a variety of consequences. So that may be another indication for operating on fear chromocytomas. Now, when it comes to lesions like retinal hemangioblastomas and CNS hemangioblastomas, the main problem we have with them is that by, by growing in areas that are very critical uh, uh, and you know, where real estate is very, you know, uh, very rare and expensive, uh, they could uh, actually cause functional problems. You can get neurologic symptoms from a growing CNS hemangioblastomas. You can have visual disturbances and actually lose vision uh, from uh, unchecked retinal hemangioblastomas. So the goal of therapy in those patients is to try and preserve function. Uh, and so uh, uh, when deemed appropriate, these tumors are removed surgically, mostly in the case of uh, in CNS hemangioblastomas, are ablated by laser or cryopation uh, and other techniques uh, in, when they arise in the eye. Uh, so, so this is, is an overview of the management of VHL uh, as uh, uh, was prevalent until not too long ago. For a number of years, uh, we and others have felt the need to come up with alternative treatment strategies that would complement and support these, uh, uh, these standard of care approaches to patients with VHL. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, a number of clinical trials 
uh, were undertaken in the beginning in the early 2000s uh, and culminating uh, in the recent clinical trial of, uh, of the HIF2 alpha inhibitor benzodiazepine that eventually led to its uh, approval uh, in patients uh, with uh, uh, VHL-associated organ-confined tumors.